Okay, so getting good skin tones while using presets or having a style, quite often presets ruin skin tones. Or how do you get good skin tones in general? It's probably the most common question I get. We're going to cover all these methods to get really great skin tones in camera, then in Lightroom, and then how do we get cohesive styles, unique styles to our images while maintaining good skin tones. The most common question I get if your skin tones are off, it makes or breaks photos very easily. Run through heaps of examples here. It's important to understand what white balance is. So if your white balance is off, all your colors in your entire image have a cast to a certain area in the color wheels. All your colors have too much purple or too much green or too much warmth. And we can use color theory to set the white balance in a much better reference point for it to build off its other colors. So to get rid of these casts of color. And what I quite often find is when I correct the white balance in a photo, it almost looks like the photo has more contrast. And that's because it does have more contrast. It has more color contrast. So if your image has a huge cast of green or yellow to it, and then you color balance it, all the colors are much more spread out throughout the color wheel. And therefore there's more color contrast. It's more balanced. Uh, it looks way better. So our very first job is to get the colors right in camera. So shoot with the right white balance. 2025 shoot auto white balance. Cameras are really good now. So here, for example, we've got a shady shot. We're in the shade, but it's a nice, bright, sunny day. We're in the shade though, so the temperature is just above daylight. So really good white balanced shot. We've got the really good reference of a white shoot here, and it's looking really good. And another tip if you want good skin tones is just expose for the subject or the skin tones. Don't underexpose your image. So it makes working with skin tones much harder to pull off. There's all sorts of noise and different... It's harder to nail your colors if you underexpose. So try to expose for the skin tones in the first place. So we'll come back to Lightroom Classic. Let's work with this image here. So if you're shooting portraits, you're probably going to be able to use the eye as a white balance tool. So if we hit it, let's see what it did added a lot more warmth and less green into the skin tones so it worked pretty good yeah that's another option you've got Let's zoom in here okay this one's pretty warm so let's grab select the eye now one thing you might notice is like it looked better before i kind of like it kind of warm like that, it looks better and now it looks kind of dull. Instead of like abandoning the white balance it just did, keep that, because now it's placed all your colors in the right part of the color wheel. Now we will just make this image look good with other adjustments. Add in saturation and vibrance and play with our contrast and just make the image look good from here. So sometimes white balance looks bad and I used to abandon the lot white balance adjustment but then if you focus on the other tools like HSL and stuff you can get the colors looking good. So don't judge the white balance picker too quick. All right let's work in Adobe Classic. Okay a good tip for white balance is um, open up the side panel here and keep the navigator open so when you click the color picker it's showing you a preview up here so then you can work with a preview there and it will help you um, definitely than just randomly clicking um, but yeah white balance pretty well here and here's an example of before and after in Lightroom so really bringing back the skin tones in this one really washed out really cold and through Lightroom we can work towards getting these skin tones and here's another example say like the sun has gone down it's obviously quite cloudy um, so we need to be at a higher white balance because it's cloudy it's late in the evening and a good indicator that you are improving the white balance is the colors pop a bit more like I said earlier there's more color contrast okay so that brings me to what are great skin tones? So film photos here do an exceptional job of skin tones. So this is film 
and I think the biggest difference in skin tones with film is it holds a lot of pinks in the skin tone it looks really good I think when people edit and how I used to edit that I used to always just think in terms of oranges reds and yellows but there's actually a lot of pinks in the lips and in the cheeks that I don't really see in digital images very often at all and I came to this realization from guest editor Emma here who gets really really nice uh, skin tones every time she shoots film and digital but yeah I like to focus on pushing those pink tones into the skin tones so here's another example here nice pink tones in uh, the skin here film photos still need uh, white balancing you can actually edit with film photos a lot so still need to white balance um, film photos they are not perfect as well so it's the colors in that one it's a film photo therefore it's not raw and we can also fix this film photo as well you can you're really surprised how much you can push film and editing you can actually have your own presets and stuff so this one as well way too warm originally so this is kelly taylor teaching and then yeah we obviously really neutralized those whites then i remember doing a really popular youtube tutorial using this image a few years ago so like i said i like to try to push pinks into uh, the skin tones how do you do that how do you work with skin tones so let's say we've already got the white balance you obviously can work in hsl but what I pointed out in this video was I was trying really hard to get the correct um, reds and oranges and I just could not get the correct red and oranges until I came down to calibration and worked with calibration so what you have to understand like there's a lot of color theory going on so you need to go watch my free trainings on color theory calibration is a lot like white balance okay so calibration and white balance determine the rest of your colors in your image so since calibration is a lot like white balance we can move the red primary to the left and say she goes very very purple just trying to make an exaggeration now she is a lot of reds like she's taking on a lot of reds so and then if we reset and then we come up play with the reds again there is now not many there's no reds in your skin tone so by playing with the primary we are changing what the hsl is and we're also doing that with white balance so understanding how these color uh, these tools interlink with each other helps you nail skin tones what i very often find is down here in the calibration is skin tones often look good with purple in the shadows this effect here i think it brings out the reds and the shadowy skin tones a lot therefore brings out a bit more pinks um, and you get really nice nice looking skin tones and this is really important when you start to create styles looks themes in your um, color palettes it's how you control uh, a cohesive looking page the white balance determines what your hsl are so you're applying presets that have hsl adjustments but because your white balance is a little off it's making your skin tones look kind of weird when you apply presets okay so obviously when you shoot with a lot of green around you people's skin tone gets really uh green so how do you fix so some people recommend or say you can do the masks so you just go uh, select people you go select facial skin and body skin create mask and now we can isolate the skin tones so i don't love this approach i think it's okay if you have a shot with a lot of green in it the skin tones should look good if the preset is good or the white balance is good some people just bypass that by just selecting the skin tones and working with the skin tones the entire image the whole color palette works together if you're making presets you don't want to have to do masking to all your skin tones forever um, so I don't love using masks to fix skin tones because you'll never learn how to actually just get good skin tones by getting good colors in Lightroom but that is an option Lightroom's made it 10 times quicker to select skin tones 
Okay, so skin tone, when you have a creative look, it gets a bit trickier and you really have to practice and fine tune your eye and know what style you are going for. Um, because a really simple bad adjustment can make your skin tones look really bad. The color theme to your Instagram has a cast of green throughout the whole image. Like her white dress for this example, Kelly Taylor's lessons her white dress is green so you're gonna have to actually trust your eye when you're going for these creative looks because um, Lightroom can't detect these creative looks for you and then for color palettes in your own style you really really have to understand the curves I haven't talked about the curves at the moment but the curves place a lot of color in your image so you really need to know the curves because just one um, enhancement of the curve really really flows up throws off your skin tones so watch my free trainings on curves and I've got a color theory free training too and then if you want more in-depth um, lessons on styles how to create styles um, join the course or sign up to the free trainings and yeah comment what you guys want to see and uh, catch you in the next one